Hi, I'm Chris Skeggs. I own Queen's Barber Barbershop in Lancashire, and I'm going to teach you how to main... Nope, start again. <laughs> Take two. Take two. Hi, I'm Chris Skeggs. I own Queen's Barber Barbershop in Lancashire, and I'm going to teach you how to tame this. Turn it into something cool. I'm going to wet them, and I'm, going to, I'm not going to horseshoe fully. I'm going to do half a horse, and then I'm going to match it up on the other side. Like, there's loads of YouTube videos out there now. It'll teach you to do like four million different sections on top of the head. How to make everything super tight and how to make everything super fancy. But if you can learn to horseshoe and you can learn to horseshoe well, there's pretty much not a haircut you can't do. So when I was taught to cut hair, I was taught, I was pretty much not allowed to cut hair until I could horseshoe. I took the time to kind of study what Sam's hair was doing while it was dry. So I know kind of how long, because he's got such curly hair, as soon as you wet any kind of curls, they're going to straighten. So you need to be kind of super considerate of what they're going to do when you re-dry them. So I'm kind of going to work this haircut in three or four stages really. I'm going to, I really want to get these sections quite square, short and square. And then I'm gonna transition my top. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a lot of this in. So I've got three massive windows right next to my station. So I predominantly, and if you look at my laminate flooring, it's worn here. Because I use all of the natural light from behind me to get all of these sections nice and, nice and crisp. How long have you been a barber for, dude? Uh, so I've been barbering now for probably, all oh, right, 31. Eight years, seven, eight years. Something in around that time. When did you open this place? It'll be three years ago. Um, December, yeah, December 2018, I opened. I feel like you can't really class it as three years old though, because we were shut for like 200 years, uh, 200 years. 200 days because of COVID, felt like 200 years. So I'm just taking these sections, kind of, I'm giving them about two inches on the side of Z, and I'm just cutting it super square. Nothing fancy about it, straight out, straight down, because he's got, this, he's got this really nice natural weight to it. And the one thing I really want, especially with Sam's hair, I always feel like whenever you're cutting someone's hair, we all have those clients that bring in pictures of Brad Pitt and Fury and stuff, and they don't have Brad Pitt's hair. You've really got to work to what the client's got. If the client's got really textured hair, talk them into having a really nice, natural textured haircut. Do you have like a number one celebrity that people come in and ask you to cut the hair like? When I started cutting hair, everyone wanted to look like David Beckham. And to be honest, David Beckham is kind of, he is what made like men grooming and looking after themselves. He's what made it popular. It was like super taboo before David Beckham came along. And then we all went through the Peaky Blinders phase, <laughs> which no one was grateful for. My brother was in that. Your brother was in Peaky Blinders? Was in extra, yeah. Oh, was he? That's, the, that's, the that's class. Well, yeah. well, the thing is that no one kind of realizes is they had those haircuts uh, and that like, well, I mean, they never dressed like that, but those haircuts were so that you could wear, a, you basically kept your hair under a hat so you didn't get lice. Mm -hmm. So you shaved the sides right down so you didn't get hair lice. So with these sections here, because because I want to take these curls in all around here, and I'm, I'm going to come out and taper these in, kind of palm to palm. So I'm not, I'm not focusing too heavily on down here yet because there's no point. Barbering for me is, if you trust your guide 100% the whole way around, it will be a consistent haircut. If you kind of think, oh, I'm pretty sure that bit needs a little bit more off, you'll lose your guide. And if you lose your guide, you're gonna go back 10 steps. As I said, I'm not overly stressing about these bottom parts yet, because they're going to change. Long hair in your shop. Yeah, I do. To be fair, my the shop I learned in the thing the thing with Liverpool 
is Liverpool, when it comes to fashion and it comes to how people style their hair, it's not like the rest of the country. So I never ever skin faded when I was working in Liverpool. If I did like two or three skin fades a week, that was a lot. It doesn't hurt as well when you're kind of going through your sections. It doesn't hurt to kind of cross section everything as you go and make sure that you've kind of got every little section, make sure you haven't missed any. So I'm going to match the horseshoe on this side now. I actually need to get a new spray bottle because this spray bottle hits every single person in the shop when I'm spraying it. Did you learn barbering or did you start hairdressing then barbering? I was kind of straight into barbering. Yeah. I started barbering by, I'd quit uni because I hated it. I was kind of past the point where I could sit in a classroom and listen anymore. So I went, I quit, I started working uh, in Topman and there was a barber shop in Topman. Uh, so I became really good friends with them, became really good friends with the owner. And I was doing quite a lot of hair modeling for him. So I was traveling quite a bit, getting my hair cut on stage at all the different like expos and for different brands and stuff. And every time I was at like the, all the shows, I was like, this is class. Like I could, I could definitely do this for a living. So that's kind of how I got into it. You're conditioned. Look at that. You are a modern man. So I'm back to the point now where the the party in the back is transitioning back to the uh, business at the front. What I'm doing here is I'm pulling straight out from the body. I kind of want to be perpendicular to every section I'm pulling out. Because I want this to be fairly square. I'm just checking the kind of, the biggest thing I was taught when I was cutting hair, that there was no tool more important than your mirror. Your mirror is literally the biggest thing you've got. If you've ever tried cutting hair without a mirror, and you are a barber, you will know how difficult it is. Uh, so what I'm gonna do with this section, I'm kind of cutting this as if it's a mullet. So in my head, when I cut mullets, I kind of split my hair like this section, this section. It's a, I, I always reference it to a 50p. So it's the shape of a 50p, has all the same corners, has that kind of shape. What's a 50p? <laughs> That's a true, yeah. This is a 50p by the way for all of the, um, for all, for all of the, the, our foreign fans. This is your, the front of your client's head. So this is kind of your first section. This is your back, your, as you're rounding the head here. This is your back and then the same. So sides, kind of transitioning around the back and where your occipital is. And then this is your front. But that, there, that's how I section hair. Never seen that before. Have you not? No. Learned something new every day. So with this part of my 50p, I'm gonna scissor over comb this. And I'm not gonna take it completely off the ear because I, 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 want, I want texture, but I'm kind of just doing the bottom bits. I'm using uh, Mizutani's. So with this, I'm kind of, I'm getting my section. This is gonna be my guide from here to the exact point on the other side, just behind the ear. So I'm gonna really kind of like, I'm gonna arch this out. So I'm gonna create a taper downwards. So we're back to my next section of my 50p, where I'm kind of going to just scissor over comb lightly. I 
like it, 90% of it, you, sh you should have fun cutting hair. I love cutting hair because it feels super creative to me, especially when I'm doing longer hair. Like I really enjoy it because I feel just creative with it. Uh, so now I'm just gonna move to my transition. I wanna create this transition that's kind of got a bit of texture to it. So when I'm transitioning, how I work is, I'll work horizontally this way and I'll work just past the middle of the head. Work up to the middle and then you go just past. And then I'll take this back corner, do the same. But obviously I, I won't go as far forward. And then go to the back, pull a few sections back. Same with your 50p and then the same on this side. So with this section, I, I don't work in as many sections across as I do with the sides. Because this is more just for refinement. So I can see my guide over here. This is my guide from the 50 pace, and I'm gonna work that way. Just past the center. So then when I kind of get to the point where I'm doing the top, I shouldn't really have too much work to do in this middle section kind of all should have done it for me. I'm gonna create my, my shape that I'm working to, I'm putting it in first. I know that it's not super traditional to do, but I'm gonna put my length that I'm kind of working to in first. And then I'm gonna work, I'm gonna cross section back through it. And I'm kind of gonna get everything to match here and match here, and I'm gonna work in between. So I've kind of, I pulled my middle section down just chop it into it super loosely. Try not to cut yourself as you're doing it. But I'm cutting this like flat. I'm gonna transition that towards the end. Did he just trip up outside then? Yeah. Class. Uh, so now I'm gonna go in with my razor. And this, so when you over section something to the side, so I've gone past the middle to pull this out you should typically end up with a bit of a peak in the middle. That's kind of how you know you've sectioned it well enough. So there's a bit of a peak, so I'll literally just, I'm taking length when I'm doing this. But the beauty of the razor is, it's like, it kind of does the same technique of what a thinning or a blending scissor will do. But you've got 100% control. You're getting your hair between your thumb and your blade. And I mean, they've all got guards on, so you're not gonna chop into your hand. This is a feather. This is, oh no, it's not, I tell a lie. This is a but, uh, butter cut. So I'm not even sure whether butter cut are still going. They used to do really, really nice scissors butter cut, but they're getting harder and harder to find. This was the first razor I ever actually owned. I've had loads since, but I keep coming back to this one just because I like the weight. It's like quite top heavy, so I know exactly what I'm grabbing. But I'm pulling all of my sections straight up. I'm kind of not trying to over direct anything. Just straight up. So I'm at the point where I'm gonna kind of look at the top and I'm looking at where I want lift because I, I don't want this to fit flat and it won't, it won't sit flat but I want lift. So I can see that there's quite a lot of weight here because we've got a lot of direction going forward. So if I was to pick it all up in individual sections, it does gradually get longer towards the front because that's where I want my weight. I want my weight at the front. So I'm gonna, because I still wanna do quite a bit of work, I'm gonna use the foam tonic, because I like to cut with it. It is nice to cut with. Cheeky, cheeky. Proper get it into the roots. Product only works. And this is like something I tell my clients, product only works. 
it's in your roots. You need it everywhere. How, how I envision this looking is whenever you kind of look at like anyone in kind of any magazine where they've got really nice messy hair, they've not sat there and it's dried naturally. It'll generally be diffused and you can get your, you can get your typical plastic diffuser like this, which does the job. It'll super curl the hair and it'll, it'll get your curls nice and tight. But I like to use a diffusing sock, but this will dry the hair. It basically speeds up the natural drying process rather than putting loads of like flow in or direction. I'm just, I just want it to dry naturally. You use a base product and you rarely like, you use it for its intended purpose. Create the shape you want to create while it's in. Your finishing product has half the job to do. You don't really want to get it to the point where you, your finishing product is doing all of your work for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all this the section where I was pulling out and I was tapering my fingers, I'm just gonna refine it with a razor. I'm just gonna break it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sharpen up this edge and I just blunt cut that. It feels like you're kind of giving someone a square neck, which is the last thing you wanna be doing. A good technique I use for breaking up hair at the back is I use this and I just, I just run through. I run just straight lines down. As I'm running in a straight line, my blade's not like that, it's slightly, slightly tapered. So I just tape it to one side, but I'm working in straight lines. These are wall seniors. These are like my go-to clipper. I predominantly use them to be fair for skin fading more than anything. So how do you want your sideburns? Do you want them as long as they are? Or do you want them a little bit shorter? Um, if it was me personally, really, I'd take them just a little bit shorter, just so where you've, where you've really got the thick hair, let that be yeah. kind of your point of. All I'm really doing here is taking these root, just a little bit underneath. Just clean them off. This is what I wanted. It's square cut, it's completely square, but it's giving you, because of all that texture, it's giving you this impression that it's just giving you a really, like a kind of 90s kind of bowl feel. I'm just gonna chuck a bit of styling powder on the top of it, just to kind of separate it. I know that typically I use a lot of styling powder on, even doing crops and the hair's short, but it works for longer hair, especially textured longer hair. Less is more, work it in bit by bit. I always try and do it from high as well, so it's gonna kind of cover as much ground as possible without getting it really intense. And I, I, I personally like to start from the back and work forward. Again, there's no wrong way of doing it. <laughs> 